Rodney Smith was raised in Manhattan. His father was a very successful CEO of different fashion companies with whom Smith had a very difficult relationship with growing up. Upon his passing, when Smith was 25, he was on the way to becoming a photographer. However, he wanted his photography to take him as far away as possible from the world he knew. However, as we will see, his life and career will come full circle once his style matures and he becomes one of the most accomplished and influential fashion photographers of his time. However, guided by his need to escape, Smith decided that he wanted to travel through the world and get as far away as possible from the world he knew. He had just finished his degree in theology at Yale University in 1973, and if you're asking yourself why theology of all subjects, he explained it during an interview with Kodak. I absolutely knew I wanted to be a photographer, but I didn't feel that studying in an art school or a photography department full-time was the best way to address the issues that were interesting to me. So I sort of intertwined the two. And he definitely did because he ended up in Yale taking photography as one of his subjects and studying with Walker Evans. And shortly after graduating, Smith was awarded a fellowship which took him to Jerusalem for three months and he produced his first book after that time he spent there, titled In the Land of Light. And during his time in the country, he visited this small Arabic community that was located near the Syrian border. And basically he spent time there um, and tried to photograph them, but no matter what, they were very rel reluctant of being photographed. And combining this with other experiences, not just in this country, but you know, as he traveled through his early 20s, he realized one thing, the importance of body language when photographing people, when you're establishing relationships with people, when you're establishing a relationship of, you know, photographer subject, but also how people react to the presence of the camera. And although this might seem a very small detail, trust me, it will make all the difference as we see his career develop. And according to Smith, is shot always on film. He enjoyed his workflow with film, but during his career, he realized that it didn't matter if you shot with film or not. What mattered was the quality of the work and how fast and efficient you could be when producing it. Smith also shot almost exclusively, only using available light. And although sometimes shooting film required that he use some artificial light for indoor scenes, and he did it, still, in his words, 99% of the work I have done has been done slowly with available light. In fact, most of the time he would walk around only carrying his Leica and from what I read he used for many years a Leica M4 and a light meter. In his words, I've worked sort of like a painter and I believe he says this because he enjoyed, according to what I read, the way light is revealed as it comes into a scene. And he quoted the book of John, where it is written that illumination is a source of knowledge. How things are revealed is how they are illuminated, which I think it's a remarkable connection. And although Smith is most known for his later work, I feel like there's more than meets the eye with these earlier pictures. And for me, when I first came upon them and I saw the diversity in subjects and etc., um, I realized that he was definitely someone who was, you know, wanting to connect with the world, who was extremely curious to see how things looked like uh, through his camera. And so, funny enough, I read then afterwards, um, and I believe that, you know, this is one of the greatest gifts as well, I wanted to pass this on to you. And I read um, an interview with him, and he said something along the lines of the greatest gift of being a photographer is to be able to um, interact and connect with the world. And, you know, this is what I see in his earlier work, and I think I still see it in his later work, but I think the diversity of subjects really speaks his mindset here. And I do believe, and I always say here on the channel, that, you know, a photograph is the result of how you, as well, interact with the world and your vision as a photographer. That's why I always say that it's so important to train your eye. And training our eye is also adopting this idea that it is truly a gift that photography gives us photographers, not just the ability to record something, but also the ability to connect and interact with the world around us.
This is Tatiana, and she's a photographer. This is her favorite painting, which she set out to recreate, detail by detail. She found a random man, rented a suit, a bowler hat, found an apple, and stole a cat. Together, they all traveled to this faraway location. And only then, Tatiana realized she had missed the most important thing, a camera. The cat suggested going home as the man grew desperate, but Tatiana had an idea. She grabbed her phone and checked MPB's website, where she found a suitable camera at a great price and with a six-month warranty. But the truth is that MPB is also a place where you can sell or trade in your gear. And you can do that not only with your photography, but also your video gear from lenses to camcorders, drones, grips and other studio equipment. If you want to see for yourself, head to their website and check their stock, kit guides, tips, techniques, and much more. They all left Tatiana thinking, instead of a photo, she would be making a movie. The cat, the man, and the apple. But anyways, after all this traveling in the mid-80s, after having lived in Israel, Wales, Haiti, and other countries, after having traveled through poor areas of the US photographing workers in cotton mills and along the Mississippi Delta, Rodney Smith starts getting assignments. These were naturally mostly connected to the advertising and commercial worlds. And the first of these for Northrop, photographing none other than the CEOs of the company all around the world. And he was asked not to make these simple portraits. The viewer had to know where in the world these CEOs were. And Rodney Smith would continue to shoot CEOs and more commercial assignments to the next eight or nine years, becoming friends with these men, traveling with them and being at ease with them. And as he shot more and more, he profounded his knowledge in how to capture or rather how to frame the human figure against the landscape and other aspects that are deeply important to his photography, such as contrasts. And in doing this, he slowly realized that he was gradually becoming more interested and more and more part of the world he came from and he so desperately had wanted to run away in his early 20s, coming full circle through his photography. And due to his connections and how his work was viewed as having a very elegant and impeccable style, which associated with the fact that he was very efficient and simplistic with his workflow, this all led him to be extremely sought after by the fashion industry. And he started getting more and more assignments to shoot for different brands. And fashion would be an area which he worked in roughly from 1993 until his passing in 2016. And in those 20 something years of his work, Smith would say that what most attracted him was the style, the grace and beauty associated with the fashion industry and not fashion per se, which when you look at his work in these late pictures is exactly what we can see, the grace, the visual simplicity. And I would venture to say there's a certain timeless quality about his work too, because majority of these pictures we could easily see today in some advertisement for high fashion houses. However, it's not just that that makes me think of these pictures as timeless, because when we look at them, we are not given a time reference as we cannot pinpoint a time and place where they were taken. The 70s, the 80s, the 90s, it all becomes a big blur. It's almost the same feeling I get as when I look at paintings by René Magritte. It's ambiguous and timeless. And I venture to say that it falls under that narrow path between modernity and classicism. And much like Magritte, when we look at Smith's images, we can infer a certain degree of elegance and a deep surrealistic feeling about the work. However, to the best of my knowledge, Smith never claimed to be deeply influenced by Magritte. And although he has never said anything about, you know, being influenced by René Magritte, I do believe that the, you know, similarities between the photos of Rodney Smith and the paintings of René Magritte are quite remarkable. Um, we have the use of hats, the clothes, the fact that we don't see the face, so there's a sort of blur of that identity where we all can fall in as individuals, and so basically the umbrella opens up to 
everyone as humanity or humans. Um, we have so many characteristics here. Of course, we're talking about paintings that are very colorful and black and white photos. Now, that's the main difference. But I think even the symmetry in the lines and given the fact that Magritte uh, painted up until his death in 1967 um, and Smith was already kind of, you know, working as a photographer, wanting to become a photographer, and by then studying, and etc. And especially in Yale, um, there's a lot of culture, it's a cultural hub, hub as well. So I feel like it makes total sense that he would have come across the paintings of René Magritte, and whether or not, um, I think, perhaps he was influenced by it. Um, another photo that leads me to think that he's very influenced by the movies or the culture he's inserted in, and I think that makes total sense, of course, um, is this picture right here, where basically it reminds me of North by Northwest, which was a movie released um, in 1959, and it was a, one, of the fam one of the most famous movies in the 1960s. It was made by Alfred Hitchcock, and it had this incredible scene where Cary Grant is running f um, you know, away from a plane. And so, in this case, the photo, um, the subject is running towards the plane, but I think the similarities are quite striking, and I think it's only natural to be influenced by what we see, by the culture we're ins inserting ourselves in. And let us not forget that you know this movie was a big box office off his hit back in the days. But anyways, we can argue there's a certain existentialism attached to Rodney Smith's surrealism. And another example of this is this image right here that was initially shot as part of a fashion shoot and ended up being used by numerous companies and even by organs connected to the US government in magazines as prints or posters because people felt that it alluded to a sense of hope for the future and there's a light-hearted feeling associated to it that people like to showcase. In his late years, Rodney Smith finally broke his resistance to working with color. Not because he had disliked color or anything like that, but because he felt that technology had finally come to a point where the rendering and control over color was completely possible. Therefore, he began taking assignments, and I would particularly emphasize the beautiful images he produced for Barbara Barry's campaign. In these images, he plays with motion and blur, as well as taking advantage of how color and the textures of color can be manipulated when we play with these two elements. For these and other reasons which we have talked about, I recognize in Rodney Smith's talent one of the best qualities a photographer can have, or rather in this case, their images. The quality of being memorable. The idea of creating a lasting impression which I'm sure will be living rent-free on yours and in my mind for many years. We might forget his name, the title, or when or where we saw this picture, but we won't forget that we saw it and will reserve with us the imagery, the impression it casted on us and how it inspired and made us feel. Anyways, guys, this has been all for today. I really appreciate you for watching. I would like to thank as well MPB for kindly sponsoring another video here on the channel. I really appreciate it. Links to them are down below, top of the description. So don't forget if you want to sell, if you want to buy or trade something. And yeah, I mean, I really enjoyed putting this video together, there is um, a conversation, um, you know, kind of like a talk um, that Rodney Smith gave uh, with b &H that I'm going to be leaving linked down below. I watched it in preparation for this video. I took a lot of information from there. But, you know, there he speaks more in detail about his career. Um, you get a glimpse of his personality. Um, his thought process and etc. Some stories as well that are pretty funny. So I'm going to leave that linked below. Anyways, links to my socials are down below. Links to my print shop as well if you're you know, wanting to grab a print and help out the channel. Or you can become a member if you'd like to. You never know. But anyways, I'd like to thank you so much for all you do, for liking, for you know, leaving your feedback on the videos, for watching the channel, taking your time to watch the videos. I really appreciate it. So I guess that with that being said, I'll say my goodbyes for now. I hope to see you here very soon for another video equally very soon. Stay care, stay safe, keep shooting, keep creating, keep learning photography, and I'm out.